Welcome to Disrupt Education. We're here with Lucas Zeidner. <laughs> Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, good to be here. All right, awesome. Tell us uh, what you're up to, man. What are you doing these days? Well, um, so I graduated from OPRF about three years ago, um, and I moved out to Minneapolis to go to the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I really wanted to get into, uh, and this is always funny because you know I'm from Chicago, and <laughs> I've been a lifelong city kid, um, but I really wanted to do agriculture and learn more about um, growing food, and in particular, um, this new newer movement called urban agriculture, which is uh, this whole idea that, you know, it, if we can grow food in our neighborhoods, you know, there's a lot of vacant space in, uh, in right. cities that isn't being utilized, and you can turn that into green space, and that, that can uh, have a really positive social effect on, uh, on the people living there. So, um, especially in neighborhoods that, you know, the USDA considers to be food deserts where, uh, where fresh produce is just unavailable. Mm -hmm. This is a really uh, tangible solution to that, and, you know, not only are you providing food, but you're creating jobs for people in the community, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're creating a beautiful space for people to go to and, and, you know, enjoy the outdoors, which is, you know, often very uncommon. Um, I mean, Minneapolis is great because there's, uh, there's been a long history of, you know, the city has a lot of parkland. But mm -hmm. um, in Chicago, you know, there's a lot of parks, but they're not in every neighborhood. And, and right. you know, you don't always have that, that nice, you know, green space and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the, some, some semblance of like a wilderness. So, so I feel like this kind of creates that because you know it's not just like a cornfield it's right. it's it's the super diverse you know we have you know kale and tomatoes and all sorts of peppers mm -hmm. and just a, a huge mix of all these things you know we we grow um some some weird things that I'd never even heard of before I started doing this. Uh, we have ground cherries, mm -hmm. which are like these. Uh, they're like cherry tomatoes, but they're they're much sweeter and like fruitier, mm -hmm. and they have uh, they have a husk yeah, around yeah. them, like uh, like a tomatillo almost. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you have to like peel them. Huh. It's, it's really interesting. You're working you're working with a, a not for profit. Mm -hmm. And yes. what is that? And and what do they do? Yeah, so uh, my nonprofit is called Nomi Roots, mm -hmm. um, and that stands for North Minneapolis. So okay. that's we're in the North Minneapolis neighborhood of, uh, of Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and, and that's the uh, the state's. Uh, it's it's the biggest concentration of, of African American people in the state of Minnesota. Okay. It's also um, a neighborhood that has not had. Uh, it's not benefited a lot from. Um, you know, a lot of the economic success that's happened in Minnesota. They, they are frequently left in the dust. In fact, we, uh, I think in, in many ways, Minnesota's uh, a state where there's huge disparities between white people and, and black people. And, um, and so this neighborhood is, you know, the clear reason that that is. It's because this is one neighborhood and it's just, you know, mm -hmm. there's, <laughs> there's, you know, it's, it's not like the rest of the city. It doesn't get all the benefits and the right. attention that uh, the rest of Minneapolis and even the rest of the state get. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, I, I really, felt, you know, as, as someone from Chicago, yeah. uh, that I, I identified with this neighborhood. I, I saw a lot of things that I, you know, had seen growing up um, in this neighborhood right. that kind of are missing in the rest of Minneapolis. Um, you know, it's, it's not as whitewashed, you know. Right. Um, and I felt that, like, this was a really important neighborhood to be working with. Mm -hmm. And um, I really love the community there. there uh, there's a lot of people who came there from Chicago, actually, oh, really? and, okay. and Detroit and places like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tried to build a, a very very positive space, um, and I really wanted to be part of that because you know it. it there, there's a lot of cultural differences between sure. Minneapolis and, and Chicago, and, right. and you know this is it. Kind of felt like home when I was with these people, huh. um, and. Uh, yeah, and, and so, uh, <laughs> where are we? We're, on, well, we're talking about the farm, yeah. 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 So, so what kind of things are you learning? Uh, right, so I mean, yeah, so I work, very fast. I think the, the biggest thing that I learn um, working with a nonprofit, as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, working for a big agricultural company or, uh, or you know, even a big commercial farm, mm -hmm. um, is that this, you know, work really requires a lot of community building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, uh, most of what I do is, is just going to meetings, um, mm -hmm. you know, talking to other people in the neighborhood, hearing uh, stories, you know, about what, what it was like to grow up, uh, you know, in North Minneapolis or in any of these neighborhoods. And, um you know how important this is to people. I mean, yeah. you know, it it's so clear, you know, to talk to any of these gardeners. They they really um, they really value having this, and it's 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 so important. And now that we're um, you know we're really building uh, something that I think is very special in the food movement, and it's that you know their goal isn't just to provide mm -hmm. you know uh, fresh vegetables and fruits. It's it's to create this local food system that kind of exists within this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, 
so self-sustaining right. kind of deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, I think a big example of this is that we have, you know, on our farm we have the cycle of, uh, you know, we'll we'll start by composting and we use our compost as fertilizer for our vegetables and then, you know, we obviously use that then to grow vegetables. Yeah. And um, in the summer we'll have high school students working for us Very and cool. so every day we cook lunch together uh -huh. and uh, you know we try to have all these events where, where you know cooking food together is is a big part of the right. culture um, and and eating together needs to be there too you know mm -hmm. and, and having conversations and, and this is where we do you know we learn about each other yeah um, and then you know with the food waste we'll, we'll compost it again so we have this this cycle going on on our farm you know and with with our community mm -hmm. um, but then last year which was the first uh, season of our us doing production it was you know we're a very new uh, right. group uh, we were very lucky because um, a new co-op grocery store uh, opened up and this co-op grocery store had been in the works for I think over a decade yeah right. um, it, it was a long-term vision for people in that community um, to the point that there were people who were members of that co-op yeah. who had paid in um, you know 10 years ago mm -hmm. and now live like in California oh, or they're Michigan <laughs> they're long gone but they were right. super, you know they, they wrote in and said you know we're super happy to see this is this is finally happening and um, and you you know this this store really wants you know the community to be a part of it I mean it's sure. a community owned store so mm -hmm. Of course, naturally, they're going to want produce that was grown by the community. So, right. Um, right. so we're working this season and, and right now, actually, this winter, we've been planning. Um, we're talking to all the other growers who um, either have grown for mm -hmm. restaurants or uh, you know food processors in the past, and uh, and we're talking about how we can all kind of come together as a, a farmers cooperative. Okay. Um, and and you know be able to sell all of our produce together to the store mm -hmm. um, and have farmers market stands and. Uh, uh, sell to there's some local food businesses uh, you know food processors and restaurants that are really interested in having really local produce and, and so uh, how hard is that like you know you figure Minnesota's got to have a very small growing season right right so yes what what does that look like year-round I mean it is you're, you're young right your first year uh, yeah doing this um what, what kind of things I mean can you sustain uh, 12 months of this or is that a challenge that that's very hard to do mm -hmm. I mean there's uh, there's companies in Minnesota that have there's a tomato company actually and they, they grow tomatoes year-round they have these big greenhouses you know right. it's so um, we'd really that's really scaling up and, and getting a greenhouse and having access to a greenhouse has been a big uh, it's been a big uh, you know long-term goal for sure. for the people here um, who I work with and uh, this year actually we've been lucky because I'm a student at the University and we have some other students uh, from the University who we work with right um, we were able to get some space at the university greenhouses. Oh, cool. So right now, a bit, another thing we're doing is we're uh, we're growing seedlings uh, mm -hmm. that will um, either go to all of our farms, mm -hmm. or uh, they'll go to community gardens, or um, they'll be given away. We there's a seedling giveaway every year, and so um, so we're going to do that. And uh, that's something um, I think that'll that's a big difference, uh, right. you know. And and on top of that, we're outfitting people's basements. Uh, sure, you know, yeah. you know, if, if you get get the lights the lights is the hardest part those are expensive okay. um, and then uh, for winter growing you either need a greenhouse or there's a lot of work being done um, figuring out how to use hoop houses which okay. is like it's a temporary structure but it's it's basically you know imagine like it's a big tunnel essentially okay. yeah and uh, and instead of glass you use like a plastic sheet that mm -hmm. you know reflects the sunlight correctly and you know it it heats up so there's some interesting methods that have been developed to uh, to heat these greenhouse uh, not greenhouses uh, to heat houses. these hoop houses yeah. um, without any electricity and all, okay. all sorts of stuff so there's uh, there's a lot going on in terms of the research um, which is why I'm I feel I'm very lucky to be at the U and right. get this more formal education that I can then mm -hmm. go and you know I, I that's a big thing I try to do is I try to share the information I'm learning at mm -hmm. the university with um, the people who I'm working with very because cool. uh, I mean that's something I, I identified even before uh, even before I worked uh, in Minneapolis, I, yeah. I did some stuff in Chicago, and mm -hmm. something I realized was that you know there's there's clearly like a passion to do this kind of work, yeah. um, and I think people really understand the benefits of it. Yeah. Right. But then when it comes time to do all the growing and do <laughs> there's exactly. sometimes yeah. sometimes there's you know there's information gaps and you have to do a lot of teaching yourself. So I wanted to have like a really formal idea, uh, you know, education on on how 
farms work, you know, right. big farms, you know, out in the country. Um, because is that, is that what you're doing then at the university? Like your classes are production? Yeah, right. Or? Yes. So, so what I study is uh, sustainable plant production systems, okay. and uh, and then I, I have a soil science minor. Wow. Soil science is like a really I would dig. It's like such that. a it's such an essential part. <laughs> yeah, but. it's easy to come up with those puns. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, then, then you take that. Does the does university? Do you guys like? Do you, I mean, it seems like you could have like fluctuation of conversation because the people mm -hmm. who are in these food deserts can give you feedback and teach you about their learning situ or their living situations and what's happening in right. the neighborhood. Yeah. And how to adapt. Yeah. Um, that's definitely something. So my. You know, post graduation mm -hmm. plan is essentially to uh, become a consultant for right. all these groups, um, cool. and I'm trying to figure out. I mean, the the hard thing about this is that there's not much money um, in it right now because sure. people are just starting out. You know, it's it's a really new field, and it's being done by people who you know just historically haven't had a lot of money. You know, right. don't have a lot of resources. You know, that they can share. But you know, through grants and things, we've been able to collect uh, some funds and and start building up the infrastructure to do this uh, right. on a bigger capacity, um, which is really great. So I'm hoping that, you know, I, I can kind of start out, I mean, you know, I can easily do like a landscaping type deal sure. if I wanted to. I, I have all those skills. I can right. I can do people's gardens if they wanted. Um, but I really would like to keep doing uh, work with my farm. Um, and. Uh, uh, it's just outstanding. Yeah, I mean, it's helping people. That's right. The number one thing. Here. Right. I mean, that was that was my goal. I, I you know, making money is is great and all, and it's it's mm -hmm. good to have security in terms of you know financial means, but. Uh, <laughs> It, you know, I, helping people was really the drive for this. You know, I, making a lot of money isn't isn't my big concern here, and I know that yeah. that's going to backfire on me at some no, point. I but don't think so. I hope not. Um, so then, were you interested in this in high school? Was this something that you were working on in science classes, or, or in, uh, I, you know, it's something I really wanted to work on, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's one thing. I mean. Uh, one of the groups that I've done work with in the past, one of their big goals is to um, implement an urban agriculture course yeah. and horticulture science um, at one of the local high schools. Um, and that's actually how they started, was because this high school was going to close down, and they, they said, well, maybe uh, if we can show that we're doing you know, all sorts of like this kind of hands-on training, right. this is something really special and important to the community, you know, we can you know, develop this relationship where mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're doing gardens, and we have high school students involved in it. And, and, that's you know, pretty powerful. So yeah, so I mean, it's, it's interesting to see how it's developed, because now they have you know, university staff coming over and, and doing these classes. So uh, it's, it's really building into something great um, and I, I feel like I moved up there at the right time because it's no, it's really yeah. it's really crazy to see all this stuff coming together because you know you hear the stories for like 10 years in the past and it's uh, you know it's 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 taken a lot of work and a lot of effort right. and a lot of people and so you know I I feel really lucky to to be in this place where I get to meet all these really interesting people who have you know made this their their whole goal in life right. so then like, taking a look at like a high school like that which you've made it that's that's got to be pretty good you got to feel good about yourself like you've been you're kind of yeah I mean it, that, right? it yeah it, it feels really good to be I mean I think that is it, it's almost like uh, it there is like a very spiritual aspect to you know Working with nature in any capacity and, yeah. and growing things like we are, you know, you know, where you have this relationship you build with your plants and right, right. and then with your community who's working with you, um, you know, it it almost is like going to church, you know, right. it it you know, it's 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 well, the people so. around you and you know you have your elders, uh, you know, who who are trying to you know impart knowledge to you and you have to you know you have to figure out like, you know, in, in this changing world, like you know what what of this makes sense? What can I learn from all these people? Um, um, and what can I learn from the people younger than me, the high right. schoolers I work with, and you know what? What can I, you know, try to impart on them? So it's, you know, it, it makes me do a lot of reflection. I'm always reflecting. Well, let's hit uh, up on that <laughs> reflection then. Let's take a look at like back here. If you were here and you could yeah. change something, or how would you restructure <clears throat> education at the high school level? You know, I I think a big thing and. And this could be, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be urban agriculture, but mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense for urban agriculture, uh, agriculture in general even. Um, but, you know, let people go outside of the, cl uh, the classroom, you know, outside of the school building, you know, right. it, have, 
you know, have some real life interactions with, with anyone. You know, go go work for a charity in Austin or, or go work for, uh, you know, any any business uh, out there and, and more of a, learn what the structures are and what the yeah. systems are that, that build all these, uh, you know, our, our world, you know, yeah. our society. What, yeah. how to, you know, learn how it really works and, and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it feels so much more refreshing than just being told how something works, yeah. uh, you know, but to learn it hands-on is, is, it's really powerful and it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it feels good and it feels like you're, you're really a part of something, so. That's awesome. So where can people find your, uh, how to give maybe to, to your, uh, your charity or uh, yeah, um, read more about it. Yeah, I mean we go? <laughs> we're not even really looking for donations, but uh, it's but yeah, we <laughs> gladly take it. I mean, sure. so uh, my farm is Nomi Roots. Okay. Uh, that's N O M I Roots, um, and we're on uh, Facebook.com. Okay. So you can just find us there. Sure. We have a YouTube channel. Awesome. I've made some videos for us. We're trying to uh, teach people mm -hmm. uh, on the internet, and and you know, have uh, a big goal for that is you know cold climate, but also showing people of color uh, gardening. Um, sure. th those two things just aren't really out there. Right. It's a lot, a lot of white people in Australia, uh, you know, in the California channels. trying yeah. to, right. right. So, so we're trying to kind of diversify a little bit cool. um, who, who, you know, is part of that narrative. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, that's our social media for now. Mm -hmm. We're working on a website. Awesome. <laughs> it's been, <laughs> we, we, I think we bought the domain like a year ago. Yeah. We're just, we just haven't oh, gotten exactly around to plotting. making it. Yeah, we need to, we need to get around to that. So. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're doing great things, man. I'm yeah. so glad you, you know we hooked up and did this because it's such a something that no, you don't really think about, right? Like right. For for every day, you know, going about my business, mm -hmm. you know, things that are kind of I take for granted for are things that others need help with, and, and I think what you're yeah. doing is honorable and it's very very cool, and you're learning so much through it. So yeah, it's it's been a wild ride, and and as you said, yeah, it's food food is one of those things that you can totally take for granted, mm -hmm. but then you then you start to think about it and and you're like whoa this is none of a lot of it just doesn't make sense right. so this is I feel like this is a really concrete answer especially for people who have lived in cities their whole lives or most of their life you fantastic know? thanks for being here Lucas yeah good to be appreciate here it. disrupting the gardening right here <laughs> yes. so appreciate it disruptors we'll see you next time